Hi YouTube, this is Kefka. I hope you're doing good. Before I get started, I have to make so something like an apology. So, um, this channel is nine months old now, and it has just four videos with this one. And I have to admit, this is rather awkward. So, therefore, sorry about that. I promise that I will make it up to you in uh, the coming weeks uh, with a lot more content than uh, just four videos in nine months. So why are we here today? I have received a care package from uh, the company Fliegen Medizin in cooperation with Shangseng Viatom and they have sent me the Checkmeo 2 for you to check out. So what is it then? Well, the name gives a clue, which is O2. So O2 basically means oxygen. Uh, where do we find oxygen? Basically everywhere in our body. But how does it get there? Basically through blood. And uh, you might have seen it at the doctor's office um, when they make a reading, usually with a finger, and it goes uh, snappy on that, and it has a red light and um, a photodiode on the other side that calculates uh, your uh, pulse and your oxygen saturation. So in the Checkmeo 2 is no um, exception to that rule. So what it basically is, we have this um, base system, the Checkmeo 2, which basically also is a pedometer and we have the uh, um, O2 probe, um, which uh, is detachable, so which is um, a uh, advantage uh, from those uh, clamps you put on your finger, um, because if this thing uh, does get broken, which never is the case, but theoretically it can happen. Um, you can get a replacement from uh, Viatom and you're fine. Um, before I would like to get into the details of the Checkmeo 2 and what it's for, um, I would like to say something about the form factor, which I really, really like. Um, because of the fact that this thing is detachable, uh, in theory, uh, you could attach other devices to it, and that, I think, was uh, the deal why they um, introduced it into a uh, detachable thing because in theory um, you could uh, attach all kinds of um, medical data acquiring um, hardware to it, for example an ECG. Um, this is ingenious, but for some reason it's also uh, a patent hassle um, because if you attach uh, um, a patented device with an, with another thing, the whole thing gets um, another uh, medical device, although the base system is the same, um, which is a bummer. So in order for that to work, um, you would need uh, both systems patented, um, and uh, in theory they would allow you then to have that um, interchangeable. All right, what is, it, what is it there for? We uh, could identify four user groups, um, basically, and uh, the first one is uh, the typical user that um, is interested in uh, its, uh, his or her um, medical parameters, and the most important one there is, is um, apart from the blood pressure, is the oxygen saturation and the pulse. And uh, that we have a large user group uh, um, of the uh, 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 COPD guys, the asthma guys, um, um, sportlers, for example, and also uh, finally, and this is uh, what I would like to talk most about in this video, is uh, the guys with uh, obstructed, or obstructed sleep apnea. Um, what is sleep apnea? It's um, actually very intuitively named. Uh, it means that uh, you do not have uh, breathing going on 
um, during your sleep. And uh, this could be for um, three of the most reasons. Um, because of the soft tissue uh, in your trachea. So when the trachea um, relaxes um, when you sleep, uh, it could happen that um, you receive, uh, that, that your um, 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 soft tissue brings the trachea to a, to a close. And um, what we have now is um, an obstructed um, uh, trachea and uh, there is no movement um, at all. Um, and the uh, lungs try to breathe in and uh, breathe out, but there is no way because it's sort of uh, a vacuum going on there uh, that is obstructed sleep apnea. Um, most people um, actually have uh, a not this severe case of uh, sleep apnea and they start to snore and this happens when the uh, soft tissue of the uh, trachea uh, gets shaken and uh, due, due to the fact that the body is uh, breathing in and breathing out of course and uh, thereby, uh, thereby uh, making the soft tissue to vi uh, vibrate and uh, producing uh, the typical snore sound. Um, last but not least, um, there sometimes is a neuro neurological um, part at play um, because it sometimes can happen that the brain does not um, send an information to the lungs to um, uh, uh, actually get breathing. This is called a central apnea. Um, what this device does uh, during your sleep is um, it gives you the ability to uh, check and um, evaluate your oxygen saturation um, while you sleep. So it, it basically is you turn it on and when I had turned it on for the first time um, I was sort of, sort of shocked. Although it says that it has a vibrator, um, I thought the vibrator is in here but um, I was completely shocked when I figured out that the vibrator isn't actually uh, in the arm device, it's in the um, oxygen saturation meter, which is actually a very clever thing to do um, because the um, hands are still the most tactile part in the body even when we are asleep. And um, what this uh, system tries to circumvent is that if the oxygen saturation gets too low and um, the, uh, the, the uh, body gets sick, sort of, uh, because we need oxygen to survive. The uh, usual oxygen saturation level during the day is somewhere around 90 to 99, sometimes 100, but that's rarely the case. Um, however, if you are below 95, um, it's already uh, considered low. Um, and below 90, um, that is severe uh, oxygen des desaturation. And uh, that would be something you should check with your doctor because um, this could go downhill very, very quickly. Um, so when the uh, body gets below um, a certain oxygen saturation level, which is um, uh, adjustable uh, during uh, within the app, um, the uh, system will send out a vibration to the finger. And um, okay, um, let, let's uh, 
go a little bit off track here because um, as you see I have it on my middle finger um, the manual says you are supposed to put it on the thumb but uh, that's in uh, with all oxygen saturation meters um, even with the ones that you see in hospitals um, the man manuals always state that you should put it in the thumb I've, but I find it most comfortable with the um, system on the middle finger instead of uh, the thumb and it works um, either way just as it uh, works with um, a professional one uh, this is a professional one I mean uh, I meant uh, a professional um, RR machine um, in the hospital where the uh, oxygen saturation is like with this uh, finger prop this really thick ones but all you need uh, with this one is actually uh, that, that one that we have here and you slip it on your finger I don't know if you can see it but it has a tiny, tiny uh, kind of bend here that uh, keeps uh, the thing together and um, makes uh, um, uh, uh, accurate readings possible so here we are within the app and um, when you um, turn on the app it will search for the um, check me out too and if I found it it um, will uh, connect to um, the uh, it, it will transmit the latest um, oxygen data so um, just to give you a basic overview of the um, two modes as I said I'm rarely uh, using the um, second mode which is called the monitor mode um, the uh, reason for that is uh, I um, you have um, a lot of limitations um, with the uh, speed uh, pedometer uh, systems and for example you only have uh, five hours of um, data and um, the uh, monitor system um, is not evaluating the uh, O2 level so therefore um, I actually I'm actually not using the uh, pedometers at all but the functionality is there which is good however let's see how a um, readout of the um, check me out to looks like and uh, let's have that one for example um, it is from uh, last night's night and uh, here we uh, see on uh, the very top the uh, average O2 which was 97% and the uh, lowest SPO2 which was 92% um, it also calculates the drops over a certain uh, amount of time for more than 4% and um, gives you an information about how many uh, um, and what, uh, uh, how long your time under 90% was uh, you get an information about the average heart rate and also um, of the total length of the recording as I said in uh, the um, SPO2 mode in, uh, in the sleep mode uh, it gives you um, a representation on how good your uh, sleep actually was um, we uh, have the possibility if you see the magnifying glass on the uh, lower right if you if we uh, check that out we um, can actually um, sort of uh, slide from left to right um, in order to uh, directly see the um, oxygen level in that specific uh, specific uh, time frame and if we um, go to the magnifying glass again um, it vanishes um, as I said uh, the uh, oxygen level below 95 is um, already considered low um, 
And therefore, of course, the uh, oxygen uh, um, color changes from uh, green to uh, a reddish color. Um, the um, more it gets into the uh, uh, area below 95 and here we actually had 92. This is all pinched to zoom so uh, you can uh, zoom in uh, to um, a certain um, amount of time I think is this is uh, seconds um, and uh, if we uh, zoom all the way out, we have that uh, information again. Let's uh, zoom into here so that you uh, get a picture on uh, how the oxygen saturation um, was. Uh, we have the possibility to um, put uh, in sort of notes. Um, and I have already done that with the uh, test thing, but let's redo that now. Um, let's change it to test two. And you see in the sleep notes that um, it, it, it changes accordingly. We do have the possibility to uh, share this information in uh, various kind of formats. Um, unfortunately, um, it is uh, just a screenshot that is um, sent over. Um, what I would have liked to see is a possibility to uh, export that data to a um, machine-readable format, um, for example, for um, Sleepyhead, or other kinds of uh, software, for example. Um, we do have a live preview on what's going on with the um, band and um, with the oxygen situation at the pulse. Uh, we Below, we see a representation of the uh, pulse wave. And uh, that's basically it, what we have here. If we go to the right, as I said, um, the uh, uh, finger probe has a built-in vibrator and uh, you can switch that one um, to uh, various um, uh, uh, strengths. I keep it at medium. And um, as I told, somewhere below 90 is considered um, severely low. And uh, here you can uh, set the uh, percentage of the SPO2 where you want the uh, system to uh, turn on the vibrate, uh, vibrator. Um, last but not least, you see that uh, step count and um, what it also has, it has the possibility to um, put that information into the cloud. Um, I am not using it though. Um, basically, um, I, I could, um, I, I am a, a cloud person, I have to admit, and everything that I have uh, runs on clouds, but I just haven't had the, uh, felt the need yet to actually uh, fill out the application for the uh, cloud form, but it is a very simple process. Um, so uh, no hassle there. Uh, this is actually everything you need to know about the app. And uh, then we are done with it. All right, this was it. Thank you so much for watching. And if you like the videos, I would uh, video. I would be very, very thankful for a thumbs up. If you don't, of course, you can give it a thumbs down. But I would like, uh, or I would appreciate if you um, would put something in the comment section down below so that I know what I did wrong. And um, anyway, of course, you can send me. Um, 
uh, comments in the comment section down below. I know I keep repeating myself, I'm sorry. And I will um, answer them, uh, uh, them as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. Have a great one. Goodbye.